हेलो एंड वेलकम टू इन फोकस प्रोग्राम टूडे टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज नाइन इयर्स ऑफ मोदी गवर्नमेंट बिग प्लान एंड की गेन्स इन द एजुकेशन सेक्टर पॉइंट्स ऑफ डिस्कशन विल बी बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द न्यूज वॉट हैज बिन डन टिल नाउ वॉट रिमेन्स टू बी डन अदर गोल्स विच हैव रिमेन्ड अनफुलफिल्ड एंड प्रैक्टिस क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मूविंग ऑन टू द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द न्यूज the modi government second term has proven to be more eventful in terms of education compared to the first the new education policy has proposed sweeping reforms in the education sector there is an inclusion of more women and doors have been opened for foreign universities in higher education however certain changes have been criticized such as the changes in textbooks and few initiatives have lost their pace in the second term now let's discuss what has been done till now National Education Policy and its Reforms The NEP has been launched in the year 2020 and it is a policy document outlining a series of reforms to be pursued in education till 2024 A new education policy comes along every few decades and India has had three to date Vital shifts proposed by the NEP 2020 include changes in the learning pattern of children from what to learn to how to learn changes in the pedagogy has been made more practical flexible and inquiry driven no hard separation between the arts and the science streams due to the covid-19 pandemic its implementation had a sluggish start but has gained momentum now this includes cuet for central universities granting more autonomy to universities for collaborating with foreign institutions offering of btech programs in regional languages establishment of a national assessment center which aligns the curriculum and assessment standards for school boards and launch of a digital storehouse for student credits and the nipun bharat scheme national curriculum framework besides the nep 2020 the national curriculum framework a crucial policy document for revising textbooks and classroom pedagogy is nearly complete on april 6 this year the ministry released the ncf pre draft for public feedback its key recommendations are conducting 12th board examinations twice a year creating a semester system for class 12 students providing students with the freedom to pursue a combination of science and humanities aiming to dissolve the rigid boundaries in the arts science and commerce streams in class 11th and 12th the final proposals of this policy document are crucial especially considering the incumbent government's past changes in school textbooks School textbooks the one area in education where the government seemed heavily invested was textbooks the national council for educational research and training that is ncert the apex body advising the center on school education has undertaken three rounds of revision in the school textbooks the first two rounds of revision were done in the years 2017 and 2019 respectively but the third and most recent round completed last year has sparked outrage This round of revision aimed at reducing the curriculum burden on students includes deletions that have acquired political implications under the current regime. Foreign universities. The current regime has been more acceptable and open to the proposal of foreign universities setting up their campuses in India. In its first term the government set up committees to explore feasibility but considerable progress was achieved only when the proposal found an endorsement in NEP 2020. The UGC has been assigned the task of formulating a regulation in this regard. However, even as the UGC is finalizing the specifics, the government has notified regulations to facilitate the establishment of offshore campuses by foreign universities in gift city Gujarat with incentives for profit repatriation. New institutions enhanced capacity. In addition to the newly centrally run educational institutions including 7 IITs, 7 IIMs 16 triple ITs 15 aims of which 12 are partially or fully functional set up in the last 9 years there was a significant capacity enhancement of existing institutions by way of the EWS quota to accommodate the 10% reservation for the economically weaker section all centrally funded educational institutions including IITs NITs IIMs central universities IISERs and triple ITs were asked to increase their overall student strength by 25% within 2 years female representation in the last 9 years efforts have been made to increase female representation in the institutions which are traditionally male dominated 
According to All India Survey on Higher Education data, there has been a reduction in gender disparity in higher education enrollment since 2014. Other significant changes are due to the scrapping of no detention policy under the Right to Education Act 2009, which guaranteed promotion through class 1 to 8 in 2019. Many states have started formulating rules to detain students from class 5 to 8. The setting up of National Testing Agency in 2017. In a bid to end Inspector Raj and dismantle lobbies, the country's apex medical education body, the Medical Commission of India, was dissolved in September 2020 and replaced with a new body that is National Medical Commission. Higher Education Financing Agency or HEFA was set up in 2017 to leverage funds from the market to finance infrastructure development in educational institutions through long-term loans. Now what remains to be done? Autonomy. The momentum of the first innings of the Modi government during its first innings of granting autonomy to the higher educational institutes seems to be lacking in its second innings. After the passage of the IIM Act, which was seen as a precursor to more radical reforms in higher education, none of the other centrally run institutions of similar caliber and excellence have been granted similar freedoms. Vacant faculty and leadership positions. Shortage of teachers and vacant leadership positions have been a constant for CEIs in the last nine years. Teacher recruitment efforts have only been prioritized and accelerated in a mission mode since September 2021 when the ministry directed all central universities and institutions of national importance to fill vacancies within a year. However, recruitment remains tardy. Other goals which have remained unfulfilled, the National Research Foundation intended to incentivize interdisciplinary research has not been set up yet. Since 2015, the overall allocation towards education has been stagnant at 2.8% to 2.9% of the GDP, despite being promised to raise public spending on education to 6%. Despite being announced in 2018 through a draft bill and included in the NEP 2020, the Higher Education Commission of India intended to replace UGC and AICTE as an overarching regulator has yet to be established. Digital University was announced in last year's union budget speech but has also failed to fructify thus far. Now moving on to practice questions. First of all, prelims question. Consider the following statements about the new education policy 2020. One, it proposes sweeping changes from primary level to PhD level education. Two, it states that the top 100 universities among the world would be able to set up their campuses in India. 3. It states that India will achieve 60% GER by 2030. Which of the statements given above is or are correct about the new education policy 2020? 1 and 2 only, 1 and 3 only, 2 and 3 only or 1, 2 and 3. And now main question, discuss the unique features and criticism of the new education policy 2020. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.